All right, guys, James and Justin back, your favorite spiritual analysts on all things culturally relevant. And we're going to be taking a look at the latest Kyrgyzat video entitled The Smallest to the Largest Thing in the Universe, The Ultimate Size Comparison. Oh, so, just, so many jokes. We're going to take, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to take it easy on this one and uh, just yeah. do a little mental gymnastics. A three-story building is about 10 meters tall, six times bigger than you. In the opposite direction, six times smaller than you, you get things like a cute squirrel, about 27 centimeters small. So the building is just as big relative to you as you are to a squirrel. You're in the middle. It's easy to understand. In fact, you are in the middle of everything in the universe. Let's go on a fantastical journey together to the small and the large and see if it's really true. An A320 is 37 meters long. The Rufus Hummingbird is around seven centimeters. Both of these flyers are 23 times bigger or smaller than you, and both fly intercontinental distances. The tiny bird migrates between Alaska and Mexico. If the Hummingbird were the same size as the jet, it would circle the Earth 85 times every year. Dinoponera, the largest ant in the world, is about 55 times smaller than you. Their small colonies have around 100 individuals, but no queens. Instead, they ruthlessly compete for status within the nest, which can reach 1.2 meters deep. If humans lived like Dinoponera, we'd be building towers of over 25 stories filled with offices and ruthlessly competing for status. And wait. The deadliest and most annoying insect in the world is the mosquito, 235 times smaller than you, while on the other end, the Empire State Building is about that much larger than you. Kind of unimaginable how something this small creates so much devastation for something that big. We're getting to the borders of human perception now. Like coarse grains of sand about 3 millimeters, 550 times smaller than you. You can feel their shape and roughness between your fingers, and if you focus, see them individually. We mix them into concrete that can hold up the tallest towers ever built, like the 828-meter-tall Burj Khalifa that's 500 times larger than you. If you were that tall, people would be as small to you as grains of sand in your hand. Hey, be gentle. Anything smaller or bigger, and it becomes hard to grasp. A medium-sized city like Lisbon is about 6,000 times larger than yourself and permeated by a network of highways, roads and alleys. On the other end, about 6,000 times smaller than you, are your small arteries permeating your whole body. Actually, you're in the middle between your network of blood vessels and the network of a city like Lisbon. Whoa! I, ha I, I haven't seen all of this, but I think what he's getting at is that you're definitely in the middle because you can go infinite in every direct in both directions, whether right. you're upscaling or downscaling. Right. It's infinite. Yeah. So you're in the middle. Yeah, that is real interesting that you're always in the middle. And I bet you that applies in all kinds of different ways. You know, like no matter what's going on, there's probably a, a scale in different directions. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to tap into what a, what about looking at this perspective like this. How is it beneficial or Maybe it doesn't even need to be beneficial, but maybe... I see what you're saying. There's something significant here that we're struggling to, like, articulate. Yeah. But there is. It's almost like no matter where you are, you're in the middle. Feels like the answer. Like, yeah. No matter where you are, you're at the center. No matter what you are, yeah. you're at the center. Because it's a mesh with infinite... Spanning in infinite dimensions and in infinite directions outwards, centering with you in the middle. Yeah. So you're always, no matter what and who or whatever you are, in the middle somehow. Yeah. You're never on top, but you're never at the bottom. <laughs> but you're in the middle. Yeah. That makes literally every single stitch that makes up the tapestry of reality precious. Yeah. 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 And a linchpin of everything else. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, it's the, maybe that's the point. If you think of a city as a living being, you find more and more parallels. A small alley is as small to the city as an arterial 0.1 millimeters wide is to you. Your tiniest capillaries are to you what the pipes bringing water to homes are to Lisbon. 
Going further, 100,000 times smaller than you, we reach a typical skin cell about 30 micrometers in diameter. A neutrophil is half as big, and one of your red blood cells is merely 7 micrometers. They are as small to you as you are to the entire Tokyo metropolitan area, the largest urban area in the world spanning over 160 kilometers. You are so incredibly big, filled with so much complexity, so many different moving parts. Or are you just a cell in the human civilization's superstructure? Are you both? Our steps are getting larger and larger now. Germany is around 875 kilometers from north to south and the fourth biggest agricultural exporter in the world. Rhizobia is a nitrogen-fixing bacteria up to three micrometers long and Remember the movie Flatliners, where they would they would put themselves to sleep with yep. anesthetics so that they could pass to the other side of after they you pass away and then they would come back. Yeah, I wonder if somebody developed a technology where you could embody the consciousness of like an ant or a bee or something like that. If people would get like hooked on it, if they would come back like crying and be like, "It's not what I thought." Like, mm. no, you don't use rationality the way a human does. Yeah, but like. When I saw my little bee babies, I was like, you know, it was the most, you've never had glory like that as yeah. a human. Yeah. You know, like we just assume so many things. Classically, humans would be like, I can just rule over that and dominate this and squash that and exterminate that. And I'm not guilt tripping anybody. Yeah. This is just part and stink and parcel of nature. Yeah. But I wonder if they ever developed the technology to put your consciousness into other things, if you would be like, everything is... <laughs> unbelievable and yeah. has purpose you know like how yeah. do you know that some dividing microbe you know what it feels like to have your consciousness zeroed into that simple of a thing isn't overwhelmingly beautiful yeah oh yeah or something like that yeah i've thought about that many times and like the purpose and the structure and the necessity of everything but then things come and they pass away too so what's that all about like things go extinct never to be there again yeah. You know, and so like what was their part in it? Just to give birth to the next thing that would take over that thing? Or Is take over the God next? so massive and vast and infinite and, and capable that he could be like, behold, fleeting f meaning, fleeting beauty, things mm. that will feel so significant you can't believe it. And it's a flash in the pan. I'll do more of it somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What's the big deal? So yeah. you like loved and fought and died and procreated and whatever yeah. and had novel ideas and invented things so what yeah wait till you see what it's like to come back as a bee yeah, it's yeah. awesome everybody gets to what it's you want better to for. that's the best that's the one everyone gets in line to try and be a bee All right. and without it that sort of agricultural production is impossible so we have a country and a bacterium depending on each other and you are in the middle both being roughly 550,000 times larger or smaller than you. What about the whole Earth? It's about 12,700 kilometers in diameter, about 7.7 .7 million times larger than you. On the other side of the scale is corny bacterium, as little as 0.3 micrometers across, living on your skin and eyes along with 100 billion other bacteria, more than 10 times more than there are humans on Earth. Again, you're in the center right in the middle of something so large that our civilization is a mere scratch on its surface and something so small and numerous you never notice its presence even as it touches you. Does that make you feel small or big? From here on out, your brain is breaking a bit. Four times wider than Earth is Neptune, a cold blue gas giant 49,500 kilometers wide. The largest planet, though, is Jupiter, 140,000 kilometers in diameter a titanic abyss shrouded in terrible winds. You could drop Earth whole into its depths and it would simply vanish. On the opposite scale, we find the deadly West Nile virus, 50 nanometers in diameter. Or one step down, the spike proteins on a coronavirus that open up cells for its RNA payload. They are as small to you as you are to the planet Jupiter. You are in the middle between gigantic planets and the world of viruses, these tiny things, so deadly. Let that sink in. A tiny virus is taking over and killing lung cells up to 500 times larger than itself with the help of a tiny protein weapon. That's like you trying to kill a giant the size of the Burj Khalifa 
with a screwdriver. But the real boss of the solar system is the Sun. Ten times bigger than Jupiter, a billion times larger than you, controlling all the planets and source of all energy that drives life. A billion times smaller than you, clearly the boss of our body, is a DNA strand, containing all the information making your life possible. You're right in the middle between the most important factors keeping everything alive. From here on, things just kind of stop making sense. A billion is already too much, but now everything just seems to mean a lot. The supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star, is 14.5 billion times bigger than you. A hydrogen atom is 15.5 billion times smaller than you. Yeah, okay, sure. But the thing is, we're not even close to being done, and it's not impossible to get at least a sense of how these scale. The solar system is 22 trillion times larger than you. On the other end of the scale is the wavelength of low-energy neutrinos released from fusion reactions in our sun. About 100 trillion of them are passing through you every single second, like ghosts a trillion times smaller than you, basically never hitting any of the particles inside you. Super cool, but I'm at this point of the video, I'm wondering, like, how, how, how do you know some of these things? Like, was, especially on the, like, zooming in thing. Are these things that you can see? Are these hypotheses? How do they measure this stuff? I don't know. Just crazy. Yeah. Right? Think of like these little strands and then the galaxy. and It's kind of neat to think of things out of our perception. And, you know, uh, that tricks, you know, tickles my interest a little bit. Things yeah. that are outside of our perception. And then it, it just naturally leads me to think about beings or forces that are just adjacent to our perception or just outside of it and is it possible to interact with them and uh, what would that be like and you know yeah. there's some pretty wild uh accounts of people using um fungi psychedelic fungus yeah and other substances you know and if you know if, if that's an interest of you just do your research and be safe about it but yeah there's some pretty interesting accounts you can go read of some of the information it's almost like an entity talking to some people yeah I've also heard some people say the more you zoom in, things begin to look like a psychedelic trip. Yeah, interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, maybe it gives you some kind of a third eye and a, like a like a microscope eye. Yeah. And uh, what's really going on or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you moved through the solar system in a straight line, you probably wouldn't hit anything either. Although things are beginning to get really weird now. A single proton at the heart of the hydrogen atom is almost exactly one quadrillion times smaller than you. If the proton were as big as you, the hydrogen atoms would be taller than 12 Mount Everests. On the other end, we meet something that just breaks human brains. The incredible vastness of space. We just have no reference for these distances at all. The distance to the closest star to Earth, Alpha Centauri, is not one quadrillion times in the other direction from the tiny proton, but 24 quadrillion. Space is just so large, it's kind of mean. And it goes on like this. A quintillion times smaller than you is the strange world of the quarks. The proton is not actually like a tiny ball, but kind of just a ripple on the surface of the ocean of quarks. Every moment, countless quarks pop into existence, along with their antiparticle enemies, before doing furious battle and annihilating each other in an instant. How many? What? Impossible to say, because the harder you look for them, the more quarks seem to appear. We're simplifying so much, it's like a lie anyway. However we choose to illustrate this, it's wrong. What actually is a quark? What does it look like to human minds? Nobody knows. As you sit here confused, let's look up again. The ocean of quarks in a proton inside a single atom of a single cell of your body is as small to you as you are compared to a sphere around 174 light years across, containing about 16,000 stars. And this is just a tiny speck of dust to our galaxy. The Milky Way is close to one sextillion times larger than you. At the opposite end, we have particles a sextillion times smaller than yourself like the wavelength of high-energy neutrinos released when cosmic rays hit our atmosphere. We're getting to the end. The observable universe is 93 billion light-years in diameter, close to a billion, billion, billion human lengths. But it's still finite. It's only 465,000 Milky Ways side by side. If you were the size of our galaxy, the observable universe would only be a day's drive across. 
On the other end of that scale, we have the tiniest particle ever detected, a proton traveling so close to the speed of light, it got squished into a pancake. As small compared to you, as the whole observable universe is big to you. We're at the border of things that we have evidence for. Are you truly in the middle of everything? The theoretical smallest physical distance is the Planck length, a hundred million times smaller than even the pancake proton. But we don't know if it's real, only that our theories of the universe break down here. Likewise, on the other end, does the bigness of the universe match the smallness of the Planck length? Well, actually, the universe could be considerably larger than that, but we will never know. Let's go back and look at the dimensions again. There are so many big things and so many small things wrapped up in them. The universe seems to be exactly the right size, with you in the middle. I like how in the video he was talking about how it was like frustrating how far it was from like our closest, you know, sun to the next sun. And I do find that absolutely frustrating that it's it made like, me think of it? astrophobia. You ever heard of that? People that are have a fear of space. Oh yeah, and I, I've heard people like uh, from about people who've gone up to space who've been like they've just gone up past like and seen space and it's been like terrifying. Mm. Like so they he they kept reiterating and you're right in the middle type thing. It's like. Well, then to what degree should I be solipsistically, narcissistically self-centered then if I'm at the center? It's like infinite in both directions. That means you're significantly significant and unbelievably insignificant at the, same, at the same time. time. <laughs> Paradox. Um, but yeah, man, I we, like to me, it drives me crazy that we're 4.7 uh, light years away from the next galaxy because you know, it means we'll probably not get to see it in our lifetime, but it would be awesome to like make it to another system and see if there was other planets that, you know, were inhabitable at least. You told me mm -hmm. recently that they, this, there was an AI program that essentially was trying to deal with a, they, they put a problem into an uh, artificial intelligence machine and it developed its own math to yeah. deal with the problem. Yeah. Something along those lines. Don't like, quote me on that stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, if there's any reality to that, you know that's a <laughs> maybe that'll be it. maybe that will be the thing maybe ai will like be able to help us uh come up with technology that will get us to those places faster the point i'm trying to make is that the best we can do you know we're so, you can see our limitedness yeah. in a video like that when they show the universe and it's always round yeah the you know there's always like a solid edge around the yeah. outside of it yeah i tend to believe when it gets to the idea of how vast something is what if the laws you're familiar with, they they go beyond laws you're familiar with yeah. in order to show that bleed out into true infinity, yeah. folding back onto itself, maybe. Maybe folding back onto itself is too generous. It's like, it does something else from which <laughs> gray matter cannot grasp. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the and same with downwards. Same with at the tiniest levels, it begins to do something that you you know, that like a, a human mouth. And yeah. human writing and human thinking can't, it's something else. It goes beyond the ability to science it, math it. Yeah, maybe we run into another life form that is like light years ahead of us in this, like, you know, exercise of searching the universe. And they're like, yeah, we've been doing it for like a billion years and we're not even close. We don't, we're not even close. Oh, to yeah. Them. There's a wait till you, oh, wait till <laughs> you discover the Zebulon. It yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> changes everything. And then you like, you have to grow a new mouth to even start. Yeah. talking about it. <laughs> yeah um who knows but yeah good i love these uh Kyrgyzard videos they're great um and guys if you like our reaction to it don't forget to hit the like subscribe share this with a friend and everyone until next time stay, stay spiritual, spiritual.